everyone, and welcome to the Internet Remix Creative Club, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this is a new thing that we're trying out. It'll probably be fun. That's what I'm telling myself. Uh, I'm your host, Kristen Trzinski. Um, I do a lot of different things. I'm joined by a whole host of folks, so I'm just kind of going to go down the line here, starting with Anne. Hi. Hello. Bro Dingles. Hello. Juno. Hi, guys. Hello. Alex. It's time to create! Time to create! Queen Creeps. It's time to die. No, please don't die. Uh, it's time- it's Scott. It's time for Scott. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore those last two. Hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> uh, and also, we've got Dawn hanging out with us. It's time for crime. It is time for crime, because we made it all the way back down to me on the list, so that was very <laughs> All right, so, um, before we get started, I'm just going to run through these prompts, and I'm going to explain some brief things for how this is going to work. Since we have three hours, the current plan is to spend the first hour with everyone just sort of making whatever it is that they want to make. It can be writing, it can be art, it can be music, it can be like graphic design bullshit. I don't care, it just has to be a thing that you start and ideally, you know, come to some form of completion in an hour. Well, 45 minutes, that's the timer that I have up here. Uh, so... You just gotta follow the prompts, uh, so we'll be doing that for the first hour, and then the second hour, the cast the cast is gonna go over all the stuff that they made and stuff, so we'll show our stuff and talk. And then the last hour, we are taking community submissions. Uh, there will be some rules for community submissions up on the screen when it comes time for that. Please make sure you follow them. Please keep in mind, when we get to community submissions, I can't promise we're gonna get to all of them, because there's a lot of you and we only have, like, an hour. Uh, but, you know, I think it's good to try to share the stuff, so we're gonna attempt. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna run through the prompts. Uh, if, if anyone sees any questions, uh, feel free to, like, draw my attention to them while I'm going mm -hmm. through this list. Okay, okay so prompts. Right. <clears throat> Food. Write your OCs eating together or alone. Write what food means to your OCs. Go nonfiction and just put me in your shoes eating something or going to a restaurant or whatever. Write or draw food. I'm hungry. Uh, dreams. Write slash draw something inspired by a recent dream you had or show me a dream your OC has had. Give me a dream sequence. I don't care. I'm sure it'll be cool. Uh, ritual. This could be religious. This could be magical. This could be as simple as what your OC does in the morning. You know, anything can be a ritual if you think about it. Uh, what's in your OC's pockets right now? Give me some deets. Uh, did you just lick me? You must incorporate this line. You must. <laughs> Uh, ghosts. This could literally be about a ghost haunting a place. It could be a thing that haunts your OC. It could be a memory. Whatever, man, I'm not afraid of ghosts. Or maybe I am, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, this can really be anything. Like, it could be about your OCs. It could just be just a simple original short thing you do. You guys can write fan fiction if you want. I always encourage fan fiction. So, uh, yeah. Are there any questions or anything like that? No, I think so. All right. Yeah. Well, I am going to start the timer then. So All righty. Let's started. go. Let's go. Oh I'm going to be on mute so that you don't hear the massive what clack, clack, clacking of my <laughs> 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 keyboard. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> yep. Did you just leave? Uh, got some nice keyboard ASMR. Mm. Yeah, I this, should probably uh, actually mute myself as well so people don't hear me constantly clapping. I guess everybody's just going to be gone. I mean, no. <laughs> No, I, I can, I'm, I staying. Can. I'm staying. Okay. I'll stay. No, it's okay. okay. It's no. okay. I just thought about it and I was just like, man, if everybody's going on mute, <laughs> so you can't hear the clacks. What are we actually streaming here? <laughs> well, currently Fine. we're just streaming the prompts and some lo-fi while we all work. I, I, I feel like I should. I feel like I should make well, some conversation. Well, we need some lo-fi. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if you guys want to talk, you can talk. I mean, I, the way I envisioned this was I was just going to play some lo-fi and write. I kind of figured it would be like, uh, you know, those study with me streams or whatever. Yeah, like you know, sometimes it's does, sometimes like, it's nice gets, like, to just <laughs> sometimes it's nice just to have like some chill music while people work on stuff, you know? Well, okay. 
I'm not just just keep doing what you're doing here. I'm 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 talking while I do that. Yeah. Like yeah. I used to run streams where it would just be like, let's listen to some lo-fi and work. The issue is that it's like then you start getting to the question of, okay, have we just become like chill beats to listen to <laughs> chill, yeah, we just beats to 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 relax to slash I mean, study no. and, and at what point <laughs> at what point does the stream lose its meaning and it's because because since they can't see any of the process that's that's kind of like part of part of my confusion i mean if people want, we should I just like screen, screen share and... I can also, we can just all share our screens and everybody can watch what's happening. I, the question is whether that will bork the streamer's computer. It will, probably. It will probably, it bork probably will because much less is borked. I, I think, I think as long as like those of us who don't necessarily need our ears occasionally say something, yeah, I think it'll be fine. People talk. Um, I mean, yeah, I can share my screen while I'm writing. That's also an option. I, uh... it, it's okay, Kristen. I was just... Well, I mean, it's only for the first part, right? Yeah, it's only yeah, for, like, like, 45 it's minutes. It's only for 42 minutes. 42 minutes and 26 awesome. seconds. God, this reminds me of the, uh, Rob Scallon, Andrew Wong, and, uh, Rumi Official thing where they had to write a song in under an hour. Mm. And then they just kept removing minutes from it. <laughs> Thumbnailing time. Thumbnailing time. I can't do too many because we only have 45 minutes, so. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta get the composition down. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Like, like I don't even. I don't even know what characters I want to use. I don't know. Put them all on a wheel, spin it, and then just thumbnail, spin, spend like two minutes putting them on a wheel, spin it, and then spend the other next three minutes thumbnailing, and then just get down. Just get down right to it. Good. Y'all probably know what <laughs> who I'm drawing. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, that's enough thumbnailing. Just started oh. 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Juno's powerful. Uh, wheeldecide.com or Wheel of Names. Hmm. Uh, question from the chat. Does OC many mean any of our OCs or is it just characters from IR? Any of your OCs. Any, any of your OCs. OC. Cool, cool, OC cool. Means OC means original character, not internet yeah. remix character. Otherwise yeah, it would be like, a uh, <laughs> like the, the whole point of exercises like this is just sort of writing and general creative work prep practice in This had a terrible idea. Do it. That sounds promising. No, it's it's not terrible as in fun terrible. It's terrible as in actually a terrible idea. Terrible. Ooh, a bone pharaoh promising. disagrees. Bone pharaoh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 
The Bone Pharaoh says screw you. <laughs> right now I'm just putting characters on a wheel. <laughs> this is just making me realize how long it's been since I last wrote something that wasn't a script. <laughs> oof. Big oof. If I tried to write while I was like <laughs> y'all, you guys have a you guys have an amazing and terrifying power. If I tried to write while I was talking, I uh, couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> it's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. I I have to run in between. <laughs> As in, like I have to like I I can't just sit down and write like a thing. I have to be listening to somebody or. Or if it's like I'm having trouble with an idea, I have to talk it through. Because if I don't talk it through, then I have no idea what I'm... I'll type it down and then I'll be like, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. So it's... Yes, no, yes, no, yes, you're gone. I mean, you guys just have the talent anyway for... Oh, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. <laughs> All right, can't spend too much time. Cleaning up sketches, just cleaning up the sketch. Juno's taking this as a challenge. <laughs> what? What? I only have forty-five minutes. You you have thirty-six yeah. minutes. <laughs> well, no, we total. I'm I'm talking total. Ah, uh, technicality. <laughs> a little more reason not to dilly dally, though. Also, thank you for the resub. Thank you for the sub. Thank you so much. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the yellow subscription. <laughs> Speaking of the Beatles, <laughs> I, I read about how they screwed you know, how they completely screwed themselves over by with tax evasion. Oh no! <laughs> they screwed up their copyright with cat with tax evasion. Oh, it, it's. It's hilarious, and this is why we this is why we don't evade taxes. Yoshi's out there. Uh, take notes because uh, you either don't want to you don't want to repeat this uh, you don't want to repeat this error. So if your if your name is Yoshi Sor Munchakupas, or T Yoshi Sor Munchakupas to be exact, if that is your name, do not be like the Beatles, the British rock band. <sighs> Good old Beatles. Did you... so one of the most sold songs of all time. They're not sure if it. They can't legally say it's the most sold song of all time because technically they never uh, wrote it, it, it's some. It's it's a uh, God. It's it's a rap song. It's by the Sugar Hill Gang. It's it's a uh, most sold song of the. 80. Ah, just screw it. My music history has completely gone out the window. My entire point is that the Sugar Hill Gang would have the top song of that decade if they wouldn't have tried to evade trying to get people like... They had to... I can't do this right now. <laughs> I get your, I get your oh, point. Yeah. Don't be you're a scumbag. Good, you're, good. you're gonna screw yourself over if you're a scumbag. <laughs> Well, it's like, they still technically got the money, it's just that all the money's only counted for. Uh, anyways, moral of the story, don't try to game the system. <laughs> Alright, I got a few seconds to grab some water. I just oh, I started... Tried. I just started. I have one sentence and I already regret it. <laughs> I'm almost at 300. <laughs>
What? Well, good for you, Queen. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, I'm at page two. I expect this from Alex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How can you guys just write things? I've written two words because I really struggle to write with people talking around me, so this was a mistake. <laughs> Heck. Uh, I should warn everyone that I currently have a limit set at like a thousand words just to make sure that we can get to everyone's stuff. Mm -hmm. ah, I get it. A picture's worth a thousand words. Some no! of us are drawing. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get to the line art. Hey, really, Juno? <laughs> what? what? I've only got 32 minutes left. I gotta go fast. <laughs> I'm not making fun of- I'm not making fun of you, I'm more just going like, God, it's been 15 minutes, I have one sentence. Oh, you're all- you're all ready? <laughs> I'm not drawing because I didn't have my pencil out when we started and- <laughs> God. This is not going to be a masterpiece. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just a draft. Okay. The whole point is to just do a draft and get some practice in. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It doesn't even have to be finished necessarily. It just has to be writing or create some sort of creation that you did. That's all it is. Don't think too hard about it. Just go for it. Uh, You've seen my draft, Kristen. I understand. It doesn't matter. I, like I know it drafts. doesn't. I know it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I'm just <laughs> I'm sorry, Queen, you were saying. Oh, um, are stalactites the ones that come up from the ground or down from the ceiling? I uh, so lactites are are come from the ceiling. ceiling. A sea uh, heights go down. Thanks. Stalagmites so with a G come from the ground. If I tried to write in this amount of time, all I, all you guys would get would be like, Jane said, I love you. Rhea said, I love you too. They kissed. The end. <laughs> I mean, that's really me? where this is going. <laughs> that's not a word. That's not a word. Well, Flex on the English language. Language is well, a Apparently word. it is a word, and I just don't know what it means. <laughs> you have the internet. You have the Merriam Webster's dictionary on your at your fingertips. <laughs> I'm looking up what it means. You also have 30 minutes. Oh reminding me! <laughs> oh, okay, so apparently this is something that you can technically write in English. Somehow, somehow these reminders are far more stressful than you have ten minutes ever yeah. has. <laughs> Nobody like that. Hang on, hang Everybody on. gets like that. Alex will remember that. Kristen, you better not. <laughs> you have twenty nine minutes and thirty seconds. <laughs> I will choke slam you. <laughs> Bring it on, fucker! You can't reach me from up there. Yes, uh, the contrary, he can. All he has to do is crouch. <laughs> okay, no. I can't clown around though. I, I can't clown around on paper because I gotta keep. I gotta keep drawing. Hey, easy for you to say. I'm working on a fucking animation. What are you? Why, why would you do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> because it's 15 seconds. 
That's long. That's long. That's long. long. <laughs> unless you're using, unless you're using motion twins. Yes. That makes okay. Sense. Well, that, that's understandable. That's more acceptable. <laughs> Okay, don't need to put that much detail on the fingers, on the fingies. Get them fingy meats. Okay, let's see. So my family is having a shrimp barbecue today. That's gonna be great. That's yeah. Fun. Uh huh. Which is why I do have to. I, I, this is why I'm probably gonna like dip out in the middle and then come back for like the sharing, the care, the sharing and caring. Or good. I mean, Wait, you guys already so people. So the people coming over his names are Sharon and Karen. <laughs> Scott, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> what do you do the first time? <laughs> nope, it would not. You have like a gazillion lives. Like it's a fact that Scott has more lives than the average cat who has nine. Okay. Do, do you want to know my secret? What is your secret? I've been using a game genie. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's how you got in one else. Listen. That explains it. The, if you have the codes, you use them to your advantage. Cheating. <laughs> have you tried playing the Blue Sphere game normally? It doesn't work. Anyways, we I don't actually know if you can use the Blue Sphere game with Game Genie. <laughs> Anyways, we got about 27 minutes, so I gotta get right back yeah. to it. Uh, you have 27 minutes! Yeah. <laughs> Good. The only thing that can make this more uh, anxiety inducing would be a TikTok sound. It's going click! I can click. So 27 minutes of the Jeopardy soundtrack! Uh, it always comes back to the Jeopardy soundtrack. I know, right? Always. <laughs> Why is it always Jeopardy, Jeopardy is eternal. Jeopardy is Jeopardy is eternal. Dumb as shit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's get you some hair. These fingers, these fingers don't have to be super detailed. Just recognizable. And make sure that you have three joints. What, one, one, two. Yes, three joints. Oh, who died? Who died? Who died? Uh oh. Don has company over. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. All right. Bye, Don. Uh, that shy guy says, and I'm going to read this out because I think Scott would enjoy it. Dumb writing prompt. A normal girl who lives a double life as the most insufferable store customer possible. The story is titled Sharon is Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right, we got twenty-five sexy minutes. <laughs> Why are you sexy? As opposed to unsexy minutes. Indeed, <laughs> twenty-five <laughs> sexy minutes as opposed to twenty-five unsexy minutes. You know what? You know what? You know when we get into the unsexy times when you have ten minutes because we've all been traumatized from dim. Yeah. I don't understand why you people are so traumatized by that. Like it's just a game mechanic. Calm down. <laughs> It's at the point where, like, when I hear you have ten minutes, I'm like, that's a decent amount of time. But it's when she starts going, you have two minutes, that I start going, <laughs> yeah. Mood. It's just, you have ten minutes is kind of the catchphrase, so. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Um, chat, give me some dumb but amusing um, famous last words, or just last words in general. 
Oh, last words no. that last words that would go on a tombstone. I need two of them. Someone just give me something. <laughs> if you can uh, look at the um, chat. <laughs> oh right, yeah. That oh, right. Here lies Scott. You ask the <laughs> chat. Died. The chat is giving you stuff. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm so. Here right. lies yeah, Scott. He died as he lived. Everyone else is busy, Scott. <laughs> yeah, I am at three pages, and I want to get to four, Scott. Okay. Here's one. Here's one for you. Here lies Scott. He ran fast and died a virgin. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dennis Bateman. <laughs> You're welcome, correct? <laughs> Alright, so that's for that one. Alright, I'm just gonna figure out a quick way to do some rumples on rolled up sleeves. That works. That, that works. Doesn't have to be super clean. Yeah, I'm not being clean with this. Hey, 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 I got a gun. No girls, girls gotta die. <laughs> That's what you're making. <laughs> Wake up at the wheel. I can't, I can't, baby, beans. Yo, your penis implements. Cha, 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 cha in the cock. Yep. What? Somebody learned 3D animation just to make a video of a dragon uh, dancing to that. <laughs> Here you want another spy cop? Here are three <laughs> things that I have that you don't depth perception, a functioning liver, and a pulse. Table man. Oi. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. That's all you get. That's all you get of demo pun. All right, saving this image. Thank you, chat. Go nonfiction and just put me in your shoes eating something or going to a restaurant or whatever. Kristen walked out the door. Juno, can I borrow your shoes? Sure, Kristen. Kristen walked, Kristen walked into my shoes and immediately discovered that they were far too big. Well, I guess they were too big. Well, this is my life now, Kristen said. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? The, I'm trying to write, and I just and came, was too like, large. I finally just got into the fucking zone, and I just got pulled out by you <laughs> saying that I was walking into your shoes. I'm sorry, we have 20 minutes. minutes. Go back, we have go 20 back minutes, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, go back, go back in your zone. Don't call We're past me. the halfway point. Spelled medieval wrong. All right, the rest of the land work's gonna be a little bit shoddy because we've only got 19 sexy minutes before the end. <laughs> you know what, fuck it, I'm not adding shadows. I'm just animating. I find that extremely offensive. Hmm. <laughs> 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 
This is also why I'm not going to be adding plaid. I hear my brother screeching like a maniac, and I literally lost the zone because of him. <laughs> go, go beat him up. But I, I still have, have more to do. <laughs> no, you I have don't. time, go beat him up. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's get to some coloring. And this is where the vector tool comes in handy. You vector tool. <laughs> That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! Whoops. Whoopsie, whoopsie. trembling a little bit because of my fitness. Alright, how many sexy, sexy minutes have we got left? 15. Excellent. 15 minutes, 55 seconds. I'm <laughs> sorry, the lack of air in your in your body. <laughs> I need to reach an endpoint. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the multiplied trick. It's hard on me and just like a sand. Red, yellow, green, red, blue, pink, gray, and white, and black, and blue, green, white, yellow, and a two to the right, two to the stripes, blue, and black, and that. You're getting salmon color. I'm not changing it. <laughs> you'll get the privilege of fingernails. You with the privilege of fingernails. the other person's skin tone. Okay, I'm gonna change that real quick. Don't have time for error here. Gotta keep on moving. Oh, right. Uh,
this, but they would usually wear that to be cute. Because everybody loves cookies and cream. separate the window into two panes because it kind of has an interesting shape. I'm sorry, Juno. What? <laughs> you just going on to yourself. Yeah. Like, everyone's making a chocolate cone. You know, everybody <laughs> likes chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Oh, listen. ten minutes, by the way. We have ten minutes! <laughs> I legit lost my train of thought. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry. sorry. It's okay. Alright, get back in the zone. <laughs>
How many words is this? <laughs> I'm curious myself, how many words is this? This is taking me back to my SAT days. <laughs> yeah, because I only have 808. I am only? at four pages and I'm calling it here. Good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm at 400 words, so that's fine. <laughs> I'm at 1500. Uh, you got Dang it, Alex! You went over the limit! <laughs> I went over the limit! Shit! <laughs> it's okay, you can't, you can't change it it's now. A, you can't change it now, and enough of it, I think, I think I, since I went under in Juno's drawing, that it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, like literally all you gotta do is like show, show the drawing, you know, just think like what they're doing. There we go. That's looking a lot more natural and less weird and pale. All right, how many minutes we got? Five? Gotcha. And let's just, uh... let's just apply a little... The word dirty with the U, what is happening to me? <laughs> dirty! <laughs> Dirty. Dirty Dan. Dirty. Which one of you is the real Dirty Dan? You know what? This is actually this is actually good practice for like when I do an illustration for my comic because I can't be spending like a gazillion hours on each page. Yeah. Yeah. So like this is good practice. But how can I do it? I'm still making it look presentable and not have to spend like ten years on it. Because God knows I've already spent enough time on it. <laughs> Use a uh, textured brush just to make it a little prettier. Let that in a bit. That's not pretty. That's, no, no it's, it's, it's still a little prettier. There we go. That's incorrect. <laughs> Let's add some shading. Bodacious. I'd watch it. You have. You have two minutes. You have two minutes. Murder God voice. You have two minutes. 
You have two minutes. <laughs> Christ. Oh, crap. Christ on the bicycle. It is a good thing that I just... All right, done. Effort. Excellent. Good for you. Excellent. I am proud of you. I mean, it's good export, but it's done. All right. Exporting time. I don't think we. I don't think we really. I don't really think we're gonna call it against you if exporting time goes over a little bit over the allotted forty-five minutes. Yeah. But I'm gonna just gonna add a little bit of red to because all the popular artists do that. <laughs> there, fine, done. <laughs> Work, but oh well. God, you animated something in 45 minutes. You animated. It's, it's... Yeah, Scott. Sit down! But actually stand up because we want to see your work. But sit down! <laughs> How much time have we got? One minute? Gotcha. 40 right. seconds! Yeah, excellent. 40 seconds. I've been looking at the Twitch timer, so I thought we had more time, but okay. It, yes, I am! Whatever. Uh, I, have, I have a separate timer on my desk, and that's what I'm looking at. Okay, gotcha. that's fair. They have time for fingernails. This is a very rough thing, but I am happy <laughs> with it. I I can find it this, I guess. Hmm, I couldn't finish it. Uh, oh, it's okay. So I guess it's we, all we right. Should have fun. <laughs> I couldn't finish mine either, but it's whatever. That's good. It's just a little bit of texture on the walls. There we go. And All right. Done. Right on the dot. Done. Nice. All right. Well, uh, that's that. Or rather, we've got ten more seconds on the clock, according to the thing. But uh, I think we're gonna go on a quick break, and then when we come back, uh, we'll we'll read and look at the stuff that we did. So, all right. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, we all will right. see you guys all in like uh, nine minutes or so. All right. Yeah. Love you all. Be right back. Bye. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the um, Internet Remix Creative Club. Uh, we're going to be mostly reading some writing because that's what we've ended up with here. Uh, reminder that this hour is for cast reading. Uh, so we will be taking your guys' submissions, um, next hour, but for now we're just gonna focus on the stuff that we wrote. So that'll be fun. Uh, mm. so we have a lot of stuff here. We got a thing I wrote, which I don't think, I don't know if I'm gonna read it out loud, but, uh, we got a thing that Alex wrote. We got a thing that Bro wrote. We got... <laughs> We got a thing that Queen wrote, and we got a thing that Anne wrote, and also uh, Juno made some art, which we will show later. So when, once Juno's back. So the question is. Uh, <laughs> wow! What am I? Chocolate? What, yeah! <laughs> oh my God! Sorry. Wow! Oh. I am looking at this list of Google Docs, and so when I saw the YouTube uh, thing, I was just like. And that must be the music that I have set aside. Like, when I'm streaming, I just sort of mentally am like, all YouTube tabs aren't real. <laughs> 2020 is the year that I'm going to bring back the Who is Scott meme. <sighs> anyway, Scott made some YouTubes. Who wants to go first? Mm. Uh... Mm. I see, so it's time to bring out the wheel. <laughs> oh no. I, I would like to request not me, because mine is Cursed Throne and Juno will be and coming Juno, back later. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna I, say. I don't mind me going first. All right. I would request that someone else read it though. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, pick me, pick me. Okay. Sure. Scott, um, would, you like to, would you like anyone to do various characters or anything like that? Well, Loki's in it, so. <laughs> All right, so cracks the knuckles. This is obvious. All right. Let's right. do narration then. Yeah, sure. So I'll, do Rex, I'll do Rex now. Okay. I'll, I'll just be Rex now. <laughs> Why is not? There anyone else okay. in it or? Uh, oh, there's one person. Uh, but they have like two lines. Okay. I'll, I guess Scott can do that. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right, proceed. Do you, do you want it, Kristen? No. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. So, 
Can I give a bit of context first? Go ahead, give sure. some context. So this is part of my, like, my universe thing. This isn't working week Loki, this is my own version of Loki. But they technically look the same, so there really there's no difference. <laughs> but um, basically the context of this is that they find a certain person who they've both been associated with, but very far back. And it's this whole thing of just like, who is this? Oh, so that's it. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. Proceed. All right. <laughs> okay, dumb children. Tonight we're going to read A Ghost by... Queen. Yeah, very creative title. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the video I named is just called Ghosts, so... Apparently everyone really liked this ghost concept. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> everyone went for ghosts. <laughs> Not everyone, but lots of people did. All right, proceed. Okay. Though the cliffs were uneven and the ground lay jagged with broken stone, Raxadal knew that Loki's stumble was not accidental. As the trickster god spread his feet to steady himself, Raxadal's eyes remained fixed on the ground, following the little snare of shadow that was seeping back towards a nearby cave entrance. A clever little trick, admittedly, but the culprit had seemingly overlooked that the former god of the Luminals stood right behind Loki. This was undoubtedly Shadow Room, an essence that was impossible for Raxadol to miss. But as the, as the stream of shadow disappeared into the cave, Raxadol couldn't help but wonder. And then he realized... There's a ghost here, he said flatly. Huh? Loki spun towards him, now recovered from his stumble. A Luminal ghost. Raxadol raised his hand, pointing towards the cave entrance. In there. And you know this, how? Loki asked, confused. Raxadol had to stop himself from rolling his eyes. For one who claimed to seek knowledge of the Luminals, Loki had a severe lack of attention span. The ghosts, Raxadol stared at Loki, are chained, but their chains bear weight. That is what tripped you, and whoever it is did not hide their trace quick enough. Loki folded his eyes and cocked an eyebrow. Oh, with arms, not eyes, sorry! <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you fold my eyes? God damn it. <laughs> there we go. It's okay, it's okay, continue. <laughs> he then proceeded to fold his arms instead <laughs> and cocked an eyebrow as he watched Raxadol approach the entrance. So, a ghost tripped me called. And what? You can't exactly kill him, can you? <laughs> Funny. Raxadol paused, turning his head back slightly. I thought you insisted on never letting any slight go unpunished. Loki's eyebrows lowered. How does one being dead make a difference? Raxadol continued to taunt him. It never stopped you with me. <sighs> Fair point. Loki quickly conceded, shrugging and following Raxadol into the cave. The interior was nothing spectacular, darkness that both of their immortal eyes could see through, which revealed damp walls, stripping stalactites, and blotches of moss that grew through cracks, old and new. The cave was not particularly wide, and there was hardly a reliable space to hide behind. But if the culprit had indeed hidden in here, Loki was somewhat impressed that he had failed to spot them. Even as he glanced to the ceiling, there was no tricky spirit to be seen. But Raxadol's eyes were sharper to the spirit's powers. It barely took him five seconds before he spotted a shroud, a dark swirl of shadow resting deep in the far right corner of the cave. There was no hesitation as Raxadol moved toward it, towards him. His status over the luminals may have been reclaimed by Baldur, but his own shadow room still rested within him. Even a ghost would think twice before attempting to confront Raxadol. Just as well, this trickster had targeted Loki instead. Otherwise, Raxadol would be less willing to hear a plea of defense. Drop this shroud! Raxadol demanded. Firm and cold, a tone he had not used in so long. Not since his reign as king. But the effect of it still remained, as the shadows dispersed sinking back towards the ground. And there stood the little assailant. A boy. No, a young man, it seemed. Wearing the multicolored garbs of what could only belong to a bard of sorts. 
those cursed black chains that Raxmel secretly feared wrapped around the ghost's body. His arms, his legs, his chest, everywhere that could be weighed down. He had brown hair and a beard, both somewhat tattered and messy. This ghost's appearance had been locked in since his death. Except the expression. This ghost looked up at Raxadol with a face sapped of any enjoyment. It was sunken, hollow, exhausted. But those hazel eyes. Raxadol couldn't help but catch a glint of something familiar. But, whatever it was, this young man was clearly not scared of who stood before him. Raxadol would soon change that. Well. The demigod looked down upon him, his voice maintaining an authoritative tone. I can understand one of your kind needing something to do to pass your time. Unfortunately, you will find your selection of targets this evening will prove to be a choice you will regret. Now, if you do not mind, tell me what you're doing here. That's you, Scott. Stopped looking at Raxadol, almost as if the demigod had not been standing there at all. Instead, his rasp of a whisper had been focused on Loki, who still stood a few feet behind Raxadol. Bewildered, Raxadol turned to look at his companion. Oh, Christ. The ghost whispered again, his tone slipping to one of disbelief, his voice almost cracked. It's really you. Found me. <laughs> Raxdal watched Loki's face closely. Loki's expression was one of genuine bafflement as he blinked dumbly at the strange spirit. But the ghost stumbled towards him, chains clattering around him. And soon, Raxdal spotted a hint of recognition upon Loki's face. He squinted the eyes, a double blink, and right as the ghost was close to reaching the trickster god. Dominic? it was. A name. One that Raxfell still failed to recognize. But in the glint of this ghost's eyes, it suddenly became more apparent. And, if this ghost had seemingly once been associated with Loki, then the familiarity made so much sense. It was mischief. The trade of the trickster hunt. Yo, Scott, thanks really for good. that. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. Great reading, great story. That was... Mm. You did a good job with atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. I, got I like it. I was a little lost, but the atmosphere I got. I like good, the spooks. Good <laughs> he is spooky. He is spooky enough. Also... Rax, or, Rax, Rax just has some cool, badass, voicey stuff. It's a good time. He just sounds cool. <laughs> it's funny because, like, when I hear you talk, I'm like, I know this is Queen speaking, but, like, writing-wise, like, you know, Rax is just... You've got a good sense of, like, how this guy speaks, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good authoritative, authoritative sort Definitely. of tone. I like it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Anyone else have any other thoughts, or should we move on to the next person? Uh... Hmm. You think? You can be mean. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> hmm. So I'm just curious where this is going to go further. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd it's say. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. The, the criticisms I would have, I'm like, wait, no, that's unfair. We had 45 minutes to write this. Yeah. Because, like, it's just yeah. like, yeah, like, this could be fake. It's like, yeah, but you had 45 minutes, if not less so, and you probably would have edited. Is, yeah. is it in media res? Yes. Could we use more explanation as to what some of the terms mean? Yes. We had 45 <laughs> minutes to write this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's why I wanted to give context. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. just, if you're able to give context and you're able to get stuff across and it grabs people, that's all that really matters at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. 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 God. No, but like, I wanted to write this as well, but I ran out of time. But what this would lead to is Loki, like, realizing who this is 
kind of comforting him, but then Rexdale would see that, like, there's that kind of smile on his face of just like, oh, I could use this to my advantage kind of look. <laughs> what a man. <laughs> As Loki do. <laughs> As he do. As Loki do. As he do. Uh, shall we move on? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Who sure. wants to go next? We're still waiting on Juno. So Juno. That we. What? Uh, it's twelve seconds. Let's just get mine out All of the right, way. Let's now. Use gods. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> oh wait, I just realized that won't work for me. Okay, one oh. second. Okay, I just real. So I had this screen share set to work with uh, Google Docs and not with YouTube. Oh. So. I mean, you know, you can see it. I'll, I'll drop the link in the... There we go. <laughs> Have fun. Everyone enjoy. All right, let's let's proceed. Cool. Uh, countdown to playing it all at once. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay. Yes. Three, two, one. Did you, did you just lick me? <laughs> My God, I think Scott! I like the majority of the video actually working on the fog than anything else. I loved it. I loved it so much. That was so That's great. great. Holy shit. That's so good. Incredible. No critique. No critique. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of uh, the Bertolt Brechtian usage of I have long since forgotten the exact theater terms. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into some deep analysis of Ghosts by Baritone Blur on YouTube. <laughs> that is great. Perfect. Ten out of ten. I just did two, one black and one white solid object, and two adjustment layers, and just added motion tweening to the rest of it, and was like, "Well, this exists now." Great. I love uh, it. Very good. Who wants to go next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. I think you want to go in. Sure. Okay. Yeah. You wanna? Okay. So first of all, we could probably use some context. And would you like to, you know, cast anyone as the various characters in this tale? Um, <clears throat> to give. Okay. First of all, to give context, I recently had to base scrap a um, story idea due to recent events, and this is basically a very, very basic proof of concept for the new story and all that. <laughs> so it's like. Nothing grand, nothing new. It's, mm. Mm. but let's see. Do I want to cast anyone? Um. Mm. Hey, Alex, you want to be Xander? <laughs> <laughs> what a sentence! All right. There's another. Yeah, there are two males and two females. The other male, eh, Scott, you want to do? Uh, sure. What kind of voice are you looking for? Um. Ca just casual, casual, uh, college students. So, Scott, then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just Scott. be yourself. Um, hey, Queen, do you want to be a part of this? No, Anne, I would not like to be a part of this. Okay, okay. of course I want to be a part of this. <laughs> uh, I think you should be Paige, just sweet. Paige, just right. sweet. Sure. And then, Kristen, you want, you want to do this? Sure, who am I playing? Celine? Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I was do it. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just tur curly screaming. I believe in anyway. you. It's okay. <clears throat> it's been a couple weeks since the four friends got together. Life and schedules have been rather crazy for each member of the team, but on this cool autumn evening, they have come to join together to, join, to enjoy their time together. And what else? And where else would they gather and hang out but at the usual place? Xander and Paige Vice are usually taking care of their coffee shop, a dream that the young married couple had since they started dating. The little place had been rather quiet compared to the rest of the day, but the owners didn't mind for a minute. For a moment. Xander goes to finish cleaning the main counter and tables. 
he quickly scrubs the obvi obviously old rag with all the strength he can muster. Paige focuses on organizing the small recreation corner they had in their shop, doing her best to keep her long brunette hair out of the way. The smell of coffee lingers in the air while the soft sound of rain patters against the windows. A bell rings as the door opens. The couple turn to see, see the visitor. A tiny framed woman, definitely in her 20s, came, with, came in with a backpack. She takes off her hood to let her wild black hair flow down. She smiles. Hey, Zan. <laughs> Xander chuckles, I can speak. <laughs> you got this, you got this. You got this. Hey, Sel. Good to see you again. Paige smiles and runs over to her best friend, hugging her tightly. Celine laughs and hugs her back. Celine goes to the counter and sits down. Ed's not here yet? I thought he would beat me. <clears throat> she chuckles softly. Xander shrugs. I'm sure he'll be here shortly. I should probably start making the snacks. The usual? Celine smiles. Yeah, that would be delicious. As soon as Xander turns his back, the bell rings again. A pale, a pale skinny, I should say skinny, not skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. A pale skinny young man walks into the warm coffee shop, shivering from the cold. He gently brushes the hair out of the rain out of his dark hair and wipes his feet. <sighs> Sorry I'm late. Dad, Dad and I had a bit of a talk. Xander turns to the male. Nah, it's fine. We know how stingy he can be. <laughs> he smiles teasingly. You want the usual, Ed? Edward goes to sit down next to Celine. Uh, yes, please. Perfect day for hot tea and a warm pastry. He puts his ba he puts his bag on the counter and takes out a gaming device. After a few minutes, Paige joins her husband and helps him out with the food. Xander finishes brewing the coffee and grabs a cup to fill with hot water. Paige quickly grabs a couple pastries and warms them up. Celine watches the two at work. I swear, they work like they have one mind. She turns on her own gaming device and turns off the volume a bit. I hope you guys are ready to get your asses beat today. She smiles smugly. Paige looks over and smirks. Oh, really now? She turns back to her work. Well, how about we start with a team battle? You two versus us two. Edward glances at Celine and smirks. <laughs> You're on. Quick practice round, Sal? Celine smiles. Let's go! About five minutes pass, and the married couple finish their work. They take the- they take the made food- that- I don't know what happened there, but- They take <laughs> the food to the counter where their friends are. Celine looks at the food and smiles. She takes a cup, filled with hot cinnamon coffee with vanilla creamer and some whipped cream, and one of the pieces of lemon bed the shop is known for. Edward grabs his hot, his cup of hot chai tea with some milk and takes a warm chocolate chip scone. Xander takes his cup of pure black coffee and a bagel for his own enjoyment. He takes a butter knife and a bit of cream cheese and spreads it across his treat. Paige quickly goes into the back room as the two begin to enjoy their food. A minute later, Paige comes out with two gaming devices, both the same as Edward's and Celine's. She places them to the side and grabs her food a cool cup of water, and a little plate with a slice of chocolate cake. Xander and Paige sit down next to their two friends. Xander smiles. Hope you two are ready to lose again. Celine lets out a laugh, her voice filled with confidence. You wish. We're going to win. The four, the four friends give smug smiles to each other and turn on their games. They play with and against each other while enjoying their evening treats and with each other. The sense of their drinks and food filling the room and adding to the warm, friendly environment the four friends love to partake in. They continue to enjoy their time until the sun disappears, signaling the beginning of the night. Celine and Edward pack up after they finish their last round. They both stand up and smile at the couple. Same time tomorrow? Celine spoke up. Xander shakes his head. Nah, tomorrow's gonna be a busy day here. You can always come and hang out, but uh, we won't be able to play. Edward shrugs. We might as well. It's gonna be boring for us. Paige smiles. We'll see you tomorrow, then. The four give each other their goodbye hugs and waves. Celine and Edward walk out of the coffee shop, heading back to their apartment. Xander and Paige begin to lock up their business, both really happy with the day that they had with their little gaming team and ready to take on the next day together. 
that's adorable. That was so cute. So cute. <laughs> Yay! It just felt very warm and cozy and nice. Warm and cozy and nice. Bagels. It's been a while since I've done anything slice of life related. I'm thinking about it. So this was actually really nice to do. I love some slice of life bullshit. Give me that slice of life bullshit. Just slather it on me. Delicious, I, I delicious do have bullshit. One very big criticism, and it's actually one that both you and, and queen share um there the prompts specifically stated that you had to include the line did you just lick me and no i you didn't did you <laughs> that was a separate prompt you, you asshole you know what that's okay <laughs> i didn't say to do every prompt oh my god <laughs> although i think i realized while making this like part of through it's like there's a bit of ritual in here in terms of like you know yeah daily part like friendly yeah. friends partakes but which is nice mm -hmm. but yeah yeah it was cute it has a good vibe Joke aside, it was very cute Yay. Yeah, it, has, it just had a good warm feeling to it yeah nice vibe yeah thank you for the warm and fuzzies thank you for the You're welcome. it's good fuzzies yeah you're welcome yeah. uh anyone want to have any other thoughts um, I think your descriptions of like the drinks and the food just really brought me into the scene because like, mm, yes, drinks, I want them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying that the through the entire reading. It was really distracting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I can uh, I just picture the daily grind as it's going on throughout like the course of the day it's yeah. it's really nice and it, it kind of makes me miss my my time back here in uh when i had my community college when i would go over to the to the local starbucks every week yeah it sounds it was really nice uh so that was good um i guess what remains is curse throne fic which uh juno's not here yet uh just more in and out <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a very brief, brief OT3 snapshot, but I didn't finish my game, so. It's just you and me, bro. Who, who, who goes first? I, I can go ahead and go, because I feel as though. Go ahead. I feel as though the OT3 snapshot is going to be a, a little bit better than what I meant. No, to. oh, no, no, no. You are grossly <laughs> overestimating. <laughs> I, the both of you can stop right now. <laughs> I will turn on the Bone Pharaoh voice. Please don't turn on the Bone Pharaoh voice. <laughs> oh, is this what I think it is? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not, not what you think it is. Oh. If I would... It, well... <laughs> okay, pro proceed. Proceed. So, so, so... Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. This is, I, okay, just... Do you even want to give context or just want to proceed? I, I need to give at least slight context. Okay. <laughs> I need to give at least slight context. Um, so Emilio and Gunnar are, are, are two of my OCs that exist that I've talked about like a little bit on the channel before. They're uh, a married spy couple who just kind of go around and and solve mysteries and shit. Um, oh, I have for gay spies? You came oh, in time, time for, for gay spies. Gay spies. Uh -huh. Excellent. <laughs> the the other context is I need you guys to understand that Kristen knows how I draft. <laughs> I just decided to to throw all caution to the wind and just draft something. So if this doesn't sound finished at all, it's it's not because it it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> it's just a bunch of sentences I smattered on the page. So, <laughs> all right. I'm Do you want to just go for it? Do you want to give any voices to anyone? Um, I, I'm gonna narrate it because there's some things that need to be read in a certain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Proceed. Okay. Proceed. Uh, Kristen, you know what? You have a line, but you'll know what it is. I'll know what it is. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So back to this in and out, because apparently that's all that any what well, that's on anyone's mind right now. Emilio and Gunnar are at their table, trying to enjoy what would normally be a pretty heckin' Daijobu dinner. But loud loud ruckus seems to have interrupted their bodacious meal. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? yelled the tiny army man at the door. Watch your fucking language! is what Emilio would have said had he not been a man to be watching his fucking language. 
Instead, he just rubbed his head and looked back at his burger. Gunn was still having a bit of a looky-loo, having taken interest in the restaurant's new gaggle of patrons. All of them were strange in their own ways, but not anything the couple hadn't seen before. Army vet? Check. Clearly a detective? Check. Medieval princess with a matching farm boy? Obviously check. They'd even seen something similar to the tiny god that had come in before in a huge t-shirt. No, see, it wasn't anything abnormal that they were doing that caught their attention. It was how obnoxious they were. Like, Jesus, who comes into an in and out and just starts screaming? Relax, calm down, get some fries. It's not that serious. One of them, a pale and, one of them, pale and skinny, broke off from the group and wandered Neil Emilio and Gunn's table. Wow, rude. The guy was staring at them really intently, and despite the two's protests, only stopped when the, two, when the large one with dread said, do not stare at them, you will die. Rude in its own right, but accurate and appreciated. <laughs> Amelia was ready to. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia was ready to throw hands if he'd gotten any closer, and Gunn wasn't one hundred percent sure if he'd stop him. Ninety-nine percent, maybe, but that one percent. <laughs> the pale, skinny man left their table and went with everyone else to gang up on the tiny god in the big T-shirt. If they weren't so sure she was some kind of fae and thus probably deserved this, the couple would have stepped in. Her pointed ears, inky hands, and black teared eyes said otherwise. <clears throat> hey, are you sure you don't want to just bounce? Emilio finally said, his patience having run thin. I, sure, why not? Gunn said, a little disappointed. He wasn't one for conflict, but he was a man of curiosity. Of course, he wouldn't let things get too bad, but this was some prime <laughs> entertainment. The two got up and cleaned their area to leave because they, they're not heathens and leave tables dirty, threw their things threw their things away and went to the um Hey Gun? Yeah. Where's the door? Oh no. There's a Fay here. A bright light came over the two and suddenly their clothing had changed into something more comfortable. Sweatpants and t shirts. All of them. Every patron in the in and out was suddenly in sweats and trainers. Oh no indeed. The tiny god smiled. And now, we can get started. <laughs> well then. Yo. Bro. <laughs> it took so me longer fun. than I would like to admit to realize this was the cast of DMP. <laughs> <laughs> really? The large one with dreads didn't, didn't clue you in? It did not, Juno! It did <laughs> not! I read it like three times before it finally clicked. Wait a second. The, <laughs> oh, ears the context that was like the 100% context that is needed is that, like, I did, in fact, this is, the, in fact, the first chapter of the In and Out fix from. <laughs> From a different I believe, perspective. I can't believe you just wrote a crossover fic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything and I had like 30 minutes left so I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> Sometimes that's the way that the best entertainment are made. God, holy god. shit. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. It's like, Jesus, who comes into an in and out and just starts screaming? Surprise! It's not that serious. God was still having, giving a bit of a looky loo. What the? Do not look at those two. You will die. Gun. Where's the door? Bodacious. 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 I. I really enjoyed every moment of this. Don't change a yes. thing. It's perfect. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. I just, I loved every every moment of what just happened. It was so good. Christ. Does anyone have any uh, <laughs> anything else to add other than the fact that that was just the most brilliant thing? It was glorious. It was absolutely glorious. It was beautiful. Yes. I'm glad yeah. Juno made it in time to hear Gay's <laughs> I am, <clears throat> I am especially glad I made it back in time. Excellent. It was beautiful. It was it was perfect, but it still didn't have the word lick in it. So you know. Oh my God. God, I was going God. to include that at some point. Like I was going to include it, and then I ran out of time. I mean, there's only so much you can do with 45 minutes. God. It took me 15 just to come up with fucking. 
See, who would be feral enough in that situation to lick somebody else? <laughs> they, they, they... Remember, <laughs> licking doorknobs is illegal in other countries. Okay, so we're gonna I'm move sorry. on. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Uh, do we want to do Curse Throne fic or Juno's art first? Uh, mine's it, mine's just a picture, so... Let's look at the picture. <laughs> so, mine's just right. a 12 second video. There we go. It is now on stream. Oh my god, it's really cute. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Really cute. I assume this was the food prompt. Yeah, this was the food prompt. No, they like. <laughs> yeah. See, if we did so the next right prompt, we couldn't show that on stream. Yeah. This is so cute. Yeah, how did? Happy how did you do this? Forty-five minutes. Yeah, she this got blows my mind that this was only forty-five minutes. It looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to be this fast if I want to finish my book. <laughs> Happy Pride Month, everyone. Happy Pride, Pride Month, everybody. Month, everybody. Happy, Pride, Happy Pride, Month. Pride Month, everybody. Just really, really good content. It makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they're just, they're just chilling, eating, they're eating good girls. drinking a milkshake, yeah. just, very just good. being, just being sweet and gay and all, all the beautiful things that they should be. I love them. Just very out good. of flavor text, no pun intended. I promise. I have to ask, what flavor is the milkshake? That's cookies and cream. Nice. Mm. Good choice. Good choice. The lick prop taps happens that, that later that evening. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Good man. Good let's, man. All right. Let's, let's move on, on before we get fanfic. before we get gross. <laughs> Curse Throne fanfic. Curse, Curse Throne, Throne fanfic. This Curse is my characters from. This is about my characters in Curse Throne. Uh, it's in four sections. The fourth one obviously contains spoilers about the fourth character from Curse Throne because they have not shown up. So if we're running low on time and or we don't want to spoil, we can just skip that one. Uh, okay. There will be an obvious warning right beforehand. Okay. Do you have any... It is all, it is all narration. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I decided, hey, I write good dialogue. Fuck you, me. I'm not going to write any dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, proceed then. He had taken many lies before. Mahel knew that the world was not as generous or kind as palace life. Many out there, if they didn't resent him personally for his upbringing, resented everyone outside their social circle. And when those with such hatred in their hearts had easy access to weaponry, the harsh reality was that one had to be ready to defend oneself at any given moment, at any given day. He wasn't like them. He didn't hate, necessarily. This was just life. That was just work. That was just what it was. He had the best training around one could. Took to it faster than his noble brothers. Some of it was genuine interest, but he couldn't deny the practicality. Middle children don't get anything particularly special. Middle children have to stand out in other ways. Speed with the blade, taking up a job outside of smiling, waving, and pretending to be a very dignified royal. He wasn't dignified at all. And those he cut open knew that, in their final moments, better than anyone. At some point, it didn't become about self-defense. It became about going out there, being a sellsword, slicing and dicing through bandits and the like, because that was all he was good at, because that's the one skill he could count on. If he were a glassblower or a miller, or had the fortune to be born literally anywhere than to the third wife of a king, he wouldn't have this issue. People told him how lucky he was that he got paid to go out and adventure. It wasn't adventure to him. Did adventurers leave piles of bodies behind them wherever they went? Yes, how they went about it so easily, he had no idea. The prince of a kingdom long behind him took another swig from his bottle. One day he might be one of the bodies left on the battlefield, cut open by someone faster, someone who would leave him behind. He hoped he'd be remembered, but he likely wouldn't. That was just life. That was just work. That's just what it was. She had the face of a demon carved from alabaster plastered over her face. The grinning skull of death worn as a mask to hide her true self. But not her eyes. Her piercing silver eyes, sparkling like the coinage of the kingdom, could never truly be hidden. Maybe that's why she was called Angel Eyes. Because it sure as hell wasn't that she was as pretty as an angel. She used to be. She used to be pretty. At least she'd like to think she was pretty. Beauty was in the eye of the beholder, and for all she could behold, 
what she once was, was out of reach. Good. The past was the past. And one could spend time hating it, or spend time killing it. And she had spent so, so long hating it. That the time for action had almost passed her by. Traveling around with royalty didn't sit with her. They always had skeletons in their closet. They always had something to hide. Something terrible that would kill them if it got out. Of course, she had skeletons in her closet too, but hopefully those wouldn't be an issue for much longer. It wouldn't be that long a con. She remembered, she wasn't exactly remembered before this. It would only be a matter of time before what Angel Eyes was, was forgotten entirely. Faded away into nothing that could haunt anyone but her. And her lips were sealed, hidden beneath the grinning skull that was her new face. And soon enough, the only ghost people had to worry about, around her, was the specter that stalked Limphos at night, plunging knives right between their ribs and disappearing into the night. She would sleep like a damn baby then. Who particularly cared if anyone else was afraid? The time when she cared was long behind her. People's obsession with death always baffled him. It wasn't that Mjolnir didn't understand death. He knew it would come for him one day. Much, much later than those around him, given the near endless lives of dragons, but one day. It was the sheer focus people put on avoiding death or, or living after it. As if that was something one could do. Such stock was put on the value of human life. On what people could do if they had more time. Mjolnir had all the time in the world, relatively speaking. He could have circumnavigated the globe hundreds of times over by now. Explored the world, seen interesting people, killed interesting people. If he was at all interested, of course. He had all the time in the world. Time was overrated. The legacies of man were so easily overlooked, overrun by the next person clawing and screaming to get their name remembered more, as if that was a thing you could quantify. The eternal paradox of man was doing everything they could while living, so that they could be famous for their deeds while they were gone. And those that spent all their time in remembrance of the so-called famous dead spent none of their time working on their own legacy. What was legacy truly worth, then? to people who put either too much stock or none into it. Mjolnir, who spent all his time reading of books, reading of history, reading of the legacies of hundreds of thousands of men, throughout all their stories, could not find the answer in any of the uncountable pages. It may have been what the ghosts of the past would not write down what mattered to them, their unknowable qualities that made one legacy more worthwhile than another. The stories told that were forever lost to the page for one reason or another. The stories Mjolnir would never get to hear. Would his story be among them? A piecemeal selection passed down by the generations that passed him by, never really knowing what he was, who he was? That was the real question. Who he was, what he was, why he thought his legacy over everyone else's would be worth putting to paper. Do we continue, or do we not have time? We have time. It's, it's up to you. We have right. time. Uh, cool. Steve and Juno, if you're okay with doing the spoilers, I guess. Uh, I am fine spoiling that this character exists. Uh, there is one fact about them that will be at the very end made very obvious. So if you're okay spoiling that, Juno. 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 Oh, dear. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My dog was barking earlier, so I didn't want to interrupt. It's okay. Right. okay. Anyways, if you're if you're cool with if you're cool with if, if it's your character, so if you're cool with it, then yeah, it's okay. All right. Cool, cool. Okay. In that case. Living among the dead through the perception of what either meant out of balance. No one was really gone, not while those stories could still be told. And even those of still mouths could speak. Delicia's mouth was hardly still, chanting arcane words none of her family had dared chant before. Yet hers was not telling a story, simply listening. Any body shuffling through life could be a player in its sad tragedy, or more often just a prop. So many people were content to live life as just props, not making waves, just doing what they were made for. But those who sought something more took on a new life. 
both the chance to really see, to really be in the world around them, and the chance to be seen, to be unseen, when those who strut and fret their hour on the, on the stage are heard no more. What a lie that was. Those of still mouths could speak. <clears throat> what purpose was there in throwing away the past? History was taught not so it could simply be ignored, but so those who shaped the past could help the strongest generation shape the future. Why be haunted by its mistakes? While you still breathe, there would always be time to correct them. Or if not, to use them as a drive to move forward, where those kinds of mistakes could never be made again. And why treat legacies as simply held by those long gone? That was the whole idea of legacies, but they never stop. Even when those who light the fires of change are nothing but ash, the trails they forged in its heat are made for the strongest generation to move along, taking it further and further. Would where she would, where she would go haunt her, be a stain forever on her name and her life? Perhaps, but it would define her. Would this be where Delicia became a whole new person? Undoubtedly but her past would fuel her future. And would this be her legacy? Then let her legacy inspire all who would come after. For as she called upon the spirits of the dead to join her in the realm of living, to stay a while to tell their story and listen to hers, she knew that years in the future, this would be her moment. This would, what she would, this would be what she would think back on day after day, in those quiet moments in the dark, right before sleep took her. This would be the legacy of the necromancers of Lymphos. Oh, fuck. <laughs> nice. Wow. This is this is really, really good stuff. Oh, man. This is really, some really dense stuff. I feel like I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, fuck. Why did you do this in 45? <laughs> you wrote hey, this in 45 minutes. Hey, chat, you guys interested in these characters? You want to learn more? Please watch Curse Throne. Thank you, Scott. Please watch Curse Throne. Please, Please watch Curse Throne. <laughs> it's really good stuff, but I, I was also thinking, <laughs> but like when you read me, me Hell's bit, I was like, uh, somebody faster or somebody with Dire Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. There's a lot of really good lines here and a lot of really good parallels and just, just very, very good. It's really good, Alex. Alex writing that deep yes, stuff in, in 45 minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very, very In 45 bad. minutes? I'm still surprised I got this done in 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah for really all four of them, good. too. Uh -huh. Yeesh. You did this really, really good, good, and you wrote stuff. Like really intense, deep shit. Seriously. It's really good. I'm sitting there, like, reflecting on my life. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Wait, man, your, what, what is a legacy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, Meanyu has been legit had me just like, wow. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Um, Bruh. It's true. We do fear of death. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess... Like, the one of you let firing. out, like, a deep... Like, one of you let out, like, a deep sigh, like, oh, after one of the lines, and I was like, I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. It was really good. <sighs> It's very good. Curse Throne is a show where serotonin go up because numbers go up. Alex, have I got some sad OCs for you? <laughs> Damn. Big big number make man dead. <laughs> Please watch Curse Throne. Please watch Curse Throne. Please watch Curse Throne. Please watch Curse Throne. There's a story behind those numbers, guys. <laughs> yeah, guys, go go watch Curse Throne. It's got some good shit. Mm-hmm. Which is on this Thursday, by the way. It is on this yeah. Thursday. Please watch yeah. Chris Throne. You'll see three of these people on Thursday. Yay! Yeah. Uh, well, the only one left is mine. It's not even yes. a page. So I think... It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Wait, we'll do this. It, it will not take very long. <laughs> um, uh, the actors or narrators? The or... obvious choices would be all the players who you think should be saying their lines. <laughs> it's an OT3 fanfic. Uh, OT, where is the page? Um. Oh, right. You guys don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have it. Hang sure on would be nice. one second. I gotta do a placeholder thing. I guess it's time for some improvisation. Yeah, just pretend <laughs> that you know what I wrote. I access need access. Fuck you. Access. 
Oh. So Google recently changed, changed uh -huh. stuff, yeah. and I am like super not enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. It's not a Thank good you. time. Google broke everything. Google broke everything, and I'm not into it. Okay, so I was going to write a really big serious thing for the ghosts <laughs> prompt because I really liked it, but I really struggle to um, write deep shit when I have people talking around me which was a real mistake when I started this stream. And then I was like, I'll write this cute thing I wanted to write, but I failed to really get into it until, like, we had ten minutes left. So... Method writing! Method writing! <laughs> so this was going to be about the rituals thing, and I was probably also going to feature the lick, the did you just lick me thing, but I never made it that far. So I'm, so I'm spoilers. Fooled. I didn't make it to that line. <laughs> uh... Okay, so, uh, Scott, you, you will be the narrator. Yeah. The various players will play who they were meant to play. It's an OT3 fanfic. <laughs> Let us proceed. What kind of tone are you going for? It's just kind of chill. I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> Jazz music echoed from tiny speakers. Toe tapping its way from too thin wall to too thin wall. <clears throat> Light flickered around the dark living room brightening the faces of the three occupants. I still don't see what was wrong with Independence Day. Murder God grumbled as she sunk deeper into the battered couch, pulling the popcorn bowl closer to her chair. <sighs> We've seen it 67 times, Emmy. Zephy said flatly as she stretched languidly across the couch. It was time for a change. Well, yeah, of course it was time for a change. That's why I suggested that and not Jurassic Park. The shorter goddess snapped from her place on Zephy's lap. Movie night is for Jeff Goldblum. We've been over this. Wait, 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 hold up. Loki spoke from over Zephy's legs. So, last week I was here, we watched Jurassic Park. Correct. <laughs> Scott? If you said anything, I it cut out for me. Correct. <laughs> I'm just going to assume you said that. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, the stream's still running, so... No, no, it's the... Can you not hear me talk at all? <clears throat> now yeah, we can. can. Until now. Now, now we can. Okay, let's just get through it. Your mic might be doing the thing. Well, I... Okay. It's just every time I tab out of anything, I have to, like, switch to the placeholder thing, so... That... Okay, anyway, proceed! Correct! Uh, murder gun. Let's... And two weeks ago, we watched Independence Day. Yep. You, <laughs> you do know Jeff Goldblum is in other movies, right? Of course I know that! I'm not an idiot! Murder got a huffed. 90s nostalgia is objectively the best movie night option. I mean, I don't disagree. Loki snatched some popcorn from the bowl in her lap before continuing. Her, okay, okay, yeah, okay in her bowl before continuing. But listen, if you need me to, like, check the IMDb page... Do you two mind? I know it's subtitled, but I want to enjoy the experience as the artists intended. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry for interrupting your furry bullshit. Murder God sighed as she focused on the screen again. The trio was quiet for a few minutes. I'm sorry, did did the wolf didn't the wolf already try to eat the rabbit? But he's like in love with her? <laughs> what? Oh my god, they're watching these stars! <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you'd be less confused if you'd stop talking. Zephy drawled. And that's They're where watching B Star. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> watching B Star. I love it. Oh, Bruce. Murder got to the part where uh, Louis comes out and she's like, she, she, she gets to the part where Louis comes out and she her blood immediately runs cold. <laughs> I have to stop watching this show now. So they taste in movies. <laughs> That was cute. Thanks. Yeah, that was, yeah, cute. That was adorable. Um, maybe I really like the first line for some reason. Just, I really love it. Thanks. The the toe tapping its way from too thin wall to too thin wall. Like you get like a whole lot just in Thanks. that one sentence. 
Uh, thank you. <laughs> I would have yeah, done. Well. I might go back and like write this properly and finish it. Yeah, up. I'd yeah, want to see more of it. Please, I want more. <laughs> but how does movie night conclude? I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I guess they, We're I not guess they binge B stars. <laughs> I guess they keep watching B-Stars. Uh, anyway, uh, we are going to take a quick break, and we're going to do uh, community submissions. Uh, there are guidelines. Guidelines are going to be showing up on the screen when I switch us to break, so pay attention to those. Uh, once again, I need to stress we are not going to be able to get through everyone's, because clearly there's a lot of you here, but, you know, we'll, we'll do what we can. So, uh, yeah, just giving you guys a heads All up, right. taking us to break now. Bye, 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 bye. See ya. Bye. bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Internet Creative Club. Um, we got a lot more submissions than I thought we were going to. So that's fine. We need more low. F Where's the lo-fi? The lo-fi has stopped. <laughs> the lo-fi uh, stopped long ago. Lo-fi did stop ago. long ago. Let me, let me grab it. There it is. There's some lo-fi chill hop. Thank you for bringing for the lo-fi. No out. copyright. Thank you. To listen to. All right. So I'm just we're just going to try to make our way through this. We're going to do our best to get through the whole list and we'll just uh we'll see how it goes. Is is right. Frederick Sea Vessel just not playing? Is yeah, it's just not on? playing. It Frederick might take it might take a few vessel. seconds. Oh, or well. I can just destroy. That's okay. It's not a big play. deal. We'll just Frederick Sea Vessel's not seaworthy. Okay, so, uh, first things first, we have this art from Geosaber. Which, Did you uh, just lick me? <laughs> okay. Which just feature features some proper Mario's. <laughs> I really appreciate this. The expressions are very good, and I like them. <laughs> I like them. I like them a lot. <laughs> uh, next off, we have this thing from Meat Morp. I think that this goes with uh, their writing. I think it might. So, I wasn't sure because they sent them separately. Yeah, they were sent separately. So I guess uh, keep this one in mind, and I guess we'll get back to it. It does. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, next of all, we got this comic, which I've made a mistake because I need to zoom in so I can actually read it. <laughs> there we go. Haha. -ha! All right. So this is from Hexcav, I believe. Mm hmm. Uh, Anyone want to do the reedy words? Sure. Like, I don't know who, like, someone should, I can't, I think, look, I think we need a man, man voice. I don't see. This is my Vincent impression. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not my Vincent impression. I don't God. see it here, I so I'll do narration again. Oh, it doesn't have Vincent. Never mind. <laughs> that ain't Vincent. There's a lot happening. There's okay. A lot happening. I can read yeah, some of the. I'm like I'm trying to think of like I do. Did were we sent any context? Mm. Um, I didn't see any context in the in the chat from where I got it. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll just hexcav if you're reading this and you want to give some context. Uh, you know, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, who wants to do word? Bro, you're doing words. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Hey, oh, okay. All right, bro's doing words. First panel. Okay. I didn't get to say goodbye to him. I don't want to die yet. Not yet. And then we go to the second panel, which is the phone. Mm -hmm. And the third panel. Forbidden magic. Reanimation. Dead reanimated condition. Unfinished business. Oh, boy. Unfinished business. Say goodbye to someone extremely dear to you. Who is it? Who am I? Who? To... What? No. Why? Her. Returning temporarily at the cost of who she was, only knowing she was brought back to back alive for something dark but unrelated to her goal. Seeing her again hurt him, never having properly accepted her death. Oh, no. Ouch. Oh, no. Ouch. Ooh. Context Oof. is in call. Context, context is in call. Is in call? Okay. Cool. So context. Story called Witch Hunt. As the preparations of the third party to stop both the corporation and the coven from an eventual genocide, the coven gathers corpses to reanimate them. Ooh. Oh shit! 
What? <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, dang. Oh, this becomes much sadder with the context. It's like, I was already sad, and now I'm sadder. <laughs> now I'm sadder. Yeah. Now it's more sad. Now it's more sad. Good job. Well, thank you. You did a good job. You Yay. did a good job. Thank you very much. You very, did very good. good. I liked it. All right, moving on. Let's see here. Next. So next, we've got, uh, as I try to... Okay, so next art, we've got something from uh, Talu Sky. Yep. Ooh. All right, what we, let's see what we got here. They fall this in. Is cool as fuck. Yeah. I believe they said it was for the dream prompt. That's Ooh. really. Ooh. Oh, interesting me... use of pointillism. Yeah, it's it a good gives... use of pointillism. It Just... gives me sleep paralysis vibes. Yeah. Hmm. It Some reminds good poses. me of like yin and yang almost. Yeah, so yeah. good poses and yeah. pose together nicely. I like the yeah. use of pointillism. It's just really good. I yeah, like, I like it. it. Yay! Yay! Good job! Alright, next one. Uh, I think this one is going down the list here. This one's from Mintly Sleep. Uh, their dragon, their avatar and dragon OC Ko Kohinoka. Talking over coffee, tea, and croissants. That's so Aww. nice! Aww. Oh, He's that makes me happy! He's saying books! <laughs> you're eating your little, little croissants! So cute! Little 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 croissants. 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 These are pretty really croissants. happy! It's so wholesome! I love it! Very good, very good. Angst, okay, so symbolism, and, you know, happy, happy happiness. times. Happiness! And then after that, we've got, of course... Some dabbing. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. So uh, there's a there is context here um, from Anathema. Uh, Vla I'm going to mess up the names. Can't wait for that. Vlaskaj is my fantasy setting that I've been world building. This started as a really stupid conversation I was having with Shura about Shuranak, who is the god of chaos, and Vlaskaj. They are a huge fucking meme lord because they love to peer behind the universe into the multiverse so they know a bunch of modern references and such. But then somehow a conversation started where we decided that Shuranak probably loves dabbing, so when they kept doing it around their followers, people thought it was a sign from the gods, and over time it just became a sort of religious symbol because nobody <laughs> in the damn universe knows where the gesture comes from. So it started as a joke, became a literal piece of canon lore, and yeah, I take my world building very seriously, as you can tell. So I got the idea to draw the ritual as some random follower of Shuranak. I kind of bullshitted the design in the time I had, summoning them through a dabbing ritual. So that's a thing. Oh, Enjoy. summoning them! Oh my god! So you summon them via the dab. That's beautiful. This is oh, really is impressive good. for only 45 minutes. Like, your use of yeah. color is really good. Yeah. Nice. Also a fun concept. <laughs> Summoned via dabbing. I liked it. Good job. Quite. Alright, next we've got... Uh... So right, so... We've got this. It's here. Who, who is the one that made this one? Illustrating Phoenix. Illustrating Phoenix. Surprise for me. God, right. Juno, can we read this one? Go ahead. Yes, of course we can. Let me let me grab it real quick. All right, got it. All right. All right. All we need is to add a harmony to fully complete this piece. I have something in mind. Ba ba da na 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 na. <laughs> Did you just lick me? One of our genres is electro swing. How can I not play the lick? <laughs> I don't get this at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Frederick C. Vessel could cooperate, let me let me find it real quick. It like, uh, here's their context. Here's my take on the lick prompt. For reference, the lick is this cliche inside joke, especially for the jazz genre, that can be heard in mainly jazz music. Oh, the characters that are speaking are named Micah and Leon. Shot of the character playing the saxophone. <laughs> it's nice. Frederick C. Vessel can't even be destroyed properly. Fred yeah, Frederick v C. Vessel is just dead, and we're just gonna have to leave. accept that. Yeah, Fred Frederick Wait, is dead. All right. Well, this has been a good time. Let's move on to the writing. Uh, we're gonna writing. start. With Ritual, which is by uh, Waffle Man. Oh boy. 
deal or no deal. A deal so, or no deal. It's, I guess it's more serious. my questions are okay. So I can see that Murder God is in here. So presumably I will be playing Murder God. Uh, are there any other requests for voices or narration or anything like that? Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I won't the the Fey Lady from Fallen Empires is the other character in here. Oh, I see. Oh no, why? <laughs> uh, so uh, 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 that says so, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I'm playing Fey Lady. Who's playing? Who's gonna do the narrating? Oh, I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Um, deal or no deal. Murder God was not particularly in the mood for people right now. Vincent was barely being cooperative, and everything was barely functioning. Some alone time would be appreciated. Clearly, fate had other plans. It was a strange coincidence that these two should just happen across each other, really. Two dealmakers that usually deal with more than just material possessions, desires, parts of your very self, and so on were more their sort of area. As the petite blonde woman in a black and red dress looked up and down this lady who had appeared from seemingly nowhere, she saw within her something very odd. This was like no human she had ever seen, nor animal really. The woman, meanwhile, was just looking around her new surroundings. My, my. I can't say I expected a place like this. Something odd, yes, but all white with some red lines. Mm, could use some sprucing up, methinks. Who are you and why are you in my void? How did you even- No, she thought. Could she be an otherworldly power? Some sort of other god? Who I am is of no concern to you. What I can offer you may be a different matter. I come from a realm beyond the one of mortals and- Do you really think you're the one in control here? I'm a god and this is my realm. So why haven't you kicked me out yet? The strange lady asked, lounging backwards on seemingly nothing. She thought about how a deal with a god could go. Surely there's something you want, no? I hear that you're running some sort of game. That right? How did she- There's no way. Would you like some help with winning? What? No! I already won! I don't need your help or anyone else's. There's nothing you can offer me. Just go away. Ooh, it's painted all over your face, my dear. There's something troubling you. Not a man, is it? Murder God flinched. How dare she? How could someone know this much about her games? This wasn't any work of the stars, as far as she knew. Yes, she wanted help with Vincent, but not from this woman. It was her story. She would do as she wanted. Why would you want to help me, huh? What could you possibly have to do with me? Oh, no reason other than boredom, maybe. Let me watch some of your games and I'll help them go a bit smoother. How does that sound? Murder God thought, then smiled. Well, how about you actually be in the games? Wouldn't that be better? I can make it happen. Now it was the intruder's turn to grin. Good try, but I'd rather keep myself and memories. You'll have to make a better offer than that, my dear. Fine. So want to watch the games and you'll help me sort out Vincent? Oh, Vincent. Thank you so much for the name. Oh. Murder got cursed under her breath. Giving any more information than necessary was a bad idea with this woman. Yes. Watch the games and... One more thing. Oh no. Murder God straightened herself, though her figure was almost amusing next to the woman's. In return for an easier time for you, I get to look after the child for a little bit. I miss my own son, and I'm sure you can manage just a little time away from him, can't you? Surely the story is more important to you than that, isn't it? The absolute nerve of this Bitch! No! No way do you get him! Get out of my fucking void! She snapped her fingers and the lady disappeared, just as she'd hoped. Oh, thank God it worked. One last message of hers echoed throughout the empty space. Good luck, my dear. You're going to need it if you want this to go your way. 
Few victories are made without sacrifice. The even angrier deity stormed away from the sight of the argument. No, of course she wasn't going to give Thorin to anyone. He was basically the only person she cared about... Uh, didn't hate. Caring about others for mortals. Or human. Was she? That was fun! Yeah. Yo, Wuffle, what the fuck? That was really good! Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was super yeah. in character. Yeah. It was a good time. Oh, impressive. Wow, that Very was impressive. awesome. I like good, it. Good, good character voices. Mm, good delicious. Voice. Yeah, I liked it. Good job. I had fun. Excellent job analyzing and understanding these characters. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I was like, I, I, when when she was all like, I think I'll take one. I'm just like, don't you dare! <laughs> you leave my son alone! <laughs> God. <laughs> that was fun. All right. Uh, cool. Next, we have Maddie's submission. Uh, Maddie, uh, who do you want someone to narrate this? Or... I guess we'll wait. I'm gonna take a guess in my head. Any oh, anyone can. Uh, <laughs> anyone can. Uh, uh, oh, stop being uh, wishy-washy. Really? I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was having fun making the. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> Adjust my glasses. Prompt, what is in your OC's pockets right now? In Maddie's pockets are a lot of things. She always has with her her D&D dice for an impromptu game if one were to happen, or for decision-making, because she can be indecisive sometimes. She also carries a pen, in case she has any sudden ideas for fan fictions or drawing, and an eraser for any mistakes. She carries headphones to listen to music when it's quiet, or she just wants to dissociate and drown out the bear noises. She carries money if she wants to buy a snack from the vending machine for lunch. She also carries gum when she needs a pick-me-up during the day or when she isn't in a, real fel in a real food mood. Speaking of food, her favorite foods are s'mores by the campfire for a snack or hot dogs for dinner. She is also a fan of grilled cheese. She can cook a bomb grilled cheese. Mmm. Cheese. <laughs> she loves other foods, too. She likes foods like all Italian food, sushi, fish, and more. She'll eat anything if you give it to her. She's pretty adventurous. Her favorite memory was last year at Camp Streamix with her friends. She enjoyed nights by the campfire, sitting around telling scary tales in the dark. Sometimes the story gets, the stories got too scary, though, and she got to use her crocodile to snuggle with so she felt safe. She loves her crocodile because she helps her feel safe when things get too scary around camp, and she also makes her feel less lonely. Oh, that's right. Aww. Aww. <laughs> what a cute being. Cutest that's adorable. Just this yeah. is precious. Cute. Very precious. Uh, my nose is That's starting cute. a little bit. I've got to say, oh no. <laughs> oh no. What I love about this one is that it goes beyond the prompt, yeah. which gives more character to the character. So yeah. I like that. <laughs> she can cook a bomb grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Real food mood. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good good thing. I liked it. Also, good use of croc and Anna. An acceptable, good, good oh. use. Good croc and Anna. We forgot one. Let me. We forgot one. Oh heck! Yeah, it was submitted. You you know which one we forgot. Which one did we which forget? Did... Oh, <laughs> we didn't forget it. I just forgot to re-upload. <laughs> uh, I didn't forget it, so I forgot it. <laughs> I'm not doing that one. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> uh. Oh, Frederick Sea Vessel. Frederick oh Frederick shit! Vessel coming back. Frederick. He's finally dead. He's finally, He's finally dead. dead. We put him okay. to rest. Uh, I think... So I'm going to say this right now. Apparently, one of one of the prompts that was done is called uh, Scam... It, it's, it's, it, was just, it was called Scam Licks Something or Other. And I have <laughs> opted to not read this one. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I was going to say, we previewed it. It, yeah. it was fine. But, like, it, it's... Oh, if you previewed it and it was fine, then okay. I, I wasn't... Well, yeah, it was all right. Okay, if it's okay. Yeah. Like if you don't, if you don't want to, though. It's if you right. don't no, want no, to, we don't have fine. to. Let's go fine. through everything else, and if we have time, we. I we'll just, get to I it. didn't trust it with the title. I did not trust it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay, 
So uh, next we have, uh, let's see here, Food Emblem Awakening by Cheesy Rosie. Uh, Alex or Scott churro. is, re- oh, Churro? What? Yeah. Little and mer- literal and metaphorical tea time. What? Oh, the one I'm, oh, I got, <laughs> my stuff ended up scrambled. I thought we were on, okay, cool, Churros is next. All right. Nice. My bad. Uh, literal me- metaphorical tea time. Uh, do you have Turo? Do you have any requests for uh narration or anything like that? It always real. It's always really strange to me whenever I see anything for anything on archive of our own. I'm like, what? Archive of our own. Crazy. Uh, Churro says anyone can go at it. One character is male and the other is female. You've lo- you've given us options, you fool. <laughs> you fool. Well, now we are paralyzed with choice. Well, um, considering this is about tea. <laughs> I'll, marry I'll take it. I'll take the girl. Why did I deafen? <laughs> I, don't I don't I don't know. Uh, that was a rhetorical okay. question. I don't I don't I don't know why. Okay, uh we we need to we need a dude to step up for the other character. Okay, Scott. My... Scott's muted. Oh my Scott's god. Muted. Scott's muted. Alex. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm like I'm just like don't look at me. I already wrote, I already read one. You did. <laughs> okay, I will narrate. Literal and metaphorical tea time by Churro Bird. Summary. Perhaps. Oh no, I'm about to. <laughs> Darmaros? That's why I didn't volunteer because I was like, I'm gonna mess Darmaros. up every word. Darmaros. <laughs> Alright, Darmaros should start selling selling shortbread cookies in his tea shop. A kettle over a stove, freshly picked mint and camillacinesis camil- leaves in boiling water. Fingers deftly chopping a lemon despite their large size. Juice juice extracted as pulp is mashed into a mortar and pe- pestle. Dar- Darmaros sm- smiled as he inhaled the scents that permeated through his kitchen. Them. He had done it time and, t- time and time again, but there was a certain peace that came from making tea. The steps became second nature to him, even as he winded, widened his horizons from just the most common types. Lemon juice poured into the kettle and gently stirred, a daring dash of honey and sugar. This was not a new kind of his, nor was it very old, but it was special to him, a staple of tradition. It was her favorite kind, after all. The bell above the door rang as the shop was entered, despite it being past closing time. Quick, but the steps, but steps that demanded attention approached the back rooms, and he knew who had arrived before even turning around. After all, there was only one woman with enough confidence to burst into his home and make it her own within seconds in this town. He turned around with a bright smile. Mistress, not a second late, are you? The woman, Mistress, gave a grin of her own in return. Well, it'd be rude of me to keep you waiting after inviting me over, Dom. She wore a floral dress that went down to her knees, a light jacket hanging off her shoulders that revealed scales among um, along them. She removed her dark sunglasses, showing off dark eyes with slitted pupils and more scales on her cheeks. Miss Seuss held up a grocery bag. I've brought cookies. I hope they work with the tea you've made, dear. I'm sure they're lovely, considering I made your favorite. The yuan tea woman raised an eyebrow before sniffing the air. A glitter appeared in her eyes. Oh, really? Dom, you shouldn't have. He opened his mouth to respond, but let out a small puff of air instead as Mrs. threw her arms around him in a tight hug. Dumbra smiled. How about you make yourself comfortable while I finish the tea, Mishu? She nodded, heading off deeper into the house as as the half-giant returned to his work. He pondered over the various teacup sets in his cabinets before taking two two with painted spring petals along the sides. Pouring the tea into cups, Darmoros thanked his mother for gifting him a kettle with a built-in strainer in the back of his mind. Carefully balancing the cups on matching saucers, along with teaspoons, uh, he walked into his living room, spotting Mishus sitting on the couch, already having placed the cookies on small plates on the table in front of her. He sat down, carefully placing the drink on the table. Mishus immediately picked up a cookie and a cup, dunking it into the hot beverage and popping it into her mouth. He did the same, quickly noting what kind of cookies they were. Shortbread. 
perhaps standard, but contained perfectly mild, but contained perfectly mild vanilla fl flavors to balance out the strong notes of the tea. After he finished the cookie, he turned and saw Mishra staring at him with an impatient but excited look in her eyes. He rolled his eyes, but a fond smile made its way onto his face all the same. Hey, Mishu. You should finish telling me about what Rusha told you the other day. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. He leaned back against the cushions as Mishuris went on, went on a most likely exaggerated recount rant about current drama in the town, gesticulating wildly. Being able to have a peaceful tea time with his best friend was sadly becoming less common nowadays. So Damaros was equally thankful to be able to spend these quiet moments with Mishuris when he could. Perhaps he should start selling shortbread cookies in his shop. Implying if he could have even pry the recipe from Mishus, that is. I'm gonna eat kudos. <laughs> you get one. One. Kudos. Yay! <laughs> Time to leave kudos. That was oh really God. nice. Time to leave kudos. That, that's my best friend. That's so good. <laughs> real good. I'm glad the lo-fi kicked in when it right, did, honestly. Yeah, I, was gonna say. Yeah. I was like, no, this is just such a lo-fi moment. It really is. It was the right move. It made me smile. It just had good, good, good energy, good mood, good was, atmosphere. It was really well formatted as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was well written. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, good job. Okay, so next, according to the list and in fall as opposed to oh heck. List. Okay, so next would be Nightmare of Hope. Can't find it. Ah. <laughs> okay. There you go. Based on the dream prompt, writing by Phoenix Six Fire. This is based on my lizard folk monk of the open hand, Kraz. She has been manipulated recently by the Archduchess of one of the levels of Nine Hells, Di Diatara. Uh, Kraz has experienced nightmares because of her, where she offers the same promise to take Kraz in as a daughter, since Kraz never had a mother of her own, as well as promising protection for her, her adopted her adopted father, Duramox, and her close friend boyfriend, Pilar. No specific casting, but four voices are needed, plus narrator. Two male, a dedicated paladin and a sassy rogue. Two female, monk warrior who grows emotional fast and a cunning goddess. And a narrator. Well? Um, I can take narrator for this one. Oh, well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well. my, turn, my turn to take another voice. <laughs> Do you want to play, uh, the monk? Yeah, sure. Why not? And, uh, last we have a cunning goddess. Um, oh wait, okay. Kristen. So, <laughs> I mean, if I must. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I must. If I, I mean, must. If I must. If I, must. If I, must. <laughs> I don't want to be, like, typecast. <laughs> uh, so who's playing the paladin and who's playing the rogue? Uh, Juno, you you spoke up, but you need to. Play. I did speak up. Uh, let me flip a coin. <laughs> I don't have a coin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip something. <laughs> coin adjacent. All right, the sassy rogue it is. <laughs> sassy rogue it is. Nice. All right, and uh, paladin is Scott back yet? No, he's not. All right, Alex, <laughs> you're a paladin. Unless you want to be a paladin, bro. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was there. You, you know what? Fine, I'll be the paladin. All right, bro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Let's do it. Okay. Um... Possible <clears throat> warnings: minor violence, deception, and corruption. Rad. Kras woke up late in the night. Once again, in the hotel her party was staying at. Luckily, it wasn't woken up by a nightmare creation. Or was that actually him? She rubbed her eyes, still trying to wrap her mind around what happened last night. Jade said it was a dream, but it felt surreal. It was real. It had to be. After a moment, Kras realized something was off. Jade, the gemstone dragon wormling the group found around a month or so ago, was not sleeping next to her like normal. Kras looked and saw the door to her room was cracked open a bit. She looked around, trying to find where Jade went. As she walked down the hall, she noticed one of the doors where her party was staying open, and no light shining from the cracks in the door. Not even the room where Grigor and Erdan were. Kras let out a sigh of relief. 
After a night's chat, oh, after last night's chat with Diatara, and the next morning with those two, where it almost turned to violence, she hoped Jade would stay away from those two. She couldn't trust them. Diatara said not to trust them. She takes a deep breath and keeps looking for Jade. After a moment, she hears a howl of pain from outside. She goes wide-eyed and rushes for the door. When she bursts outside, she freezes in fear as she sees the scene before her. Jade, the small, innocent dragon, lays on the road, not moving. Standing above him is Grigor and Erdan, two people she considered as friends and for a long time, and now look at what happened. Grigor, the fallen Azamar devoted paladin, and Erdan, the dark elf thief, both look up at her. Well, well, look who showed up too late. Grigor says, a smile growing on his face. What the hell did you do? Kraz growls, looking furious at the two. Erdan laughs. <laughs> Jade wasn't going to work with us after what you told him. He was supposed to help us, not you. We kept him around for our use. He kept you in the group so you could help us. Without him, you would have left. And we needed you to do this plan we had. Then again, we could have done it without you. And with you finally figuring out the truth, we decided there was nothing we could do except end this friendship once and for all. Grigor draws his sword. Kras takes out her quarterstaff, imbued with the magic given by Jade to help her attacks become stronger. So, Diatara was right. You were just using me. You don't care about me at all. Kras mutters. Exactly. And now you will pay for going against us. We shall start by going to find Pelar and using him to bring you down further. You wanted more than anything to protect him, right? Well, go protect him then. <laughs> Grigor says, with a sinister chuckle. <laughs> no! Kras screams and charges at them. Grigor is able to run up and block her in her path, while Erdan draws his blade and slices into her side. Kras yells in pain, letting up just enough to have Grigor kick her to the ground, right next to Jade, and keep her down. Erdan makes his way in the direction of where Palar is staying. No. Kras mutters. Diatara, please. You promised. <laughs> I did, my dear. She hears a familiar cunning voice in her mind, as the visions of what is going on around her start to change. Kras gets up, stiffly clutching her side in pain, but the world around her is blood red. Diatara stands next to her and helps Jade up to her feet. Who runs over to Kras and clutches close to her? Tears start to form in Kras's eyes. My dear, you see that I have been the one telling the truth this whole time. Please, come home. Diatara says kindly, motherly love filling her voice. Kras thinks for a moment. You promise they will be safe? Palar, do our marks, shrink it, even Jade? Diatara's comic smile fades. I cannot promise safety. Many are after me, but I will try my best. She walks over, placing a comforting hand on Kras's shoulder. Tears fall down Kras's cheeks, then she nods. Okay, I will come home. But how do I get there? Diatara smiles again. I will make a way for you, my dear. Just bring all of your family to where I will tell you, and you will never have to worry again. You are my daughter, and I will protect you and all you are. Kraz smiles at her. Thank you, mother. Well, that seems like that. Holy cow! Well, that was dark. Jesus. That escalated quickly. That escalated quickly. I mean, it did take nightmare, but mm, that was good stuff. Oh, that was so good stuff. Oh, no. Well. <laughs> I'm sure Elf. that will all turn out fine. <laughs> uh, <it's laughs> Great. Uh, well, we had a good time. I believe next is uh, food emblem. I think food, food, food emblem. emblem. Food emblem. Great. Alex just got requested to narrate. Okay, so I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so.
context. This is the food prompt applied to the beginning of Fire Emblem Awakening. This is also my first ever fanfic. Whoever wants to narrate can narrate. Also, apologize to Ploop. apologies to Ploops. I didn't realize after writing this that this fic doesn't bode well for him. <laughs> it's okay. They're not sapient. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So, uh, who's gonna narrate? Scott's still gone, so I guess it's Alex. <laughs> I I guess it's Alex. I guess it's Alex. <laughs> mm -hmm. Robin doesn't know why, but he just loves bear meat. The crunchiness, the juiciness, and the tenderness of the meat just paired beautifully to make the perfect dish. He wonders what he could do with this meat if he was in the kitchen rather than the woods. What seasonings he could use. How else could he prepare this beautiful piece of meat? <laughs> How would this meat taste if he were to cut it up and put it in a sandwich? How would it pair with the texture and taste of bread, cheese, maybe some pickles? Not to mention all the condiments he put on it. Maybe one day he could open a maybe one day he could open a bear themed restaurant. It could happen. Robin still doesn't know what he plans to do with his future. And he would serve all sorts of bear themed dishes there. Bear meatloaf, bear souffle, tender bear steak, even bear soup. Robin's mouth waters at these possibilities, but now he is out of bear. Hmm. He's really sad that there isn't any more to eat, but at least the bear tasted really good while he had it. But wait, Lissa must have gotten full, because most of her bear is still there. Robin asks for her piece, <laughs> and she obliges, SCORP! <laughs> oh, she looks pretty disgusted at something. Maybe she had some bad food or something earlier today. Oh well. Robin decides not to worry about it as he digs into a second serving of bear. <laughs> Frederick is looking at you right now and he's just he's just shaking his head in disapproval. Oh my god. Sorry, can okay. I just say, for that to be your first fanfic, that was fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Frederick, no, I, Frederick I think I... is looking at Robin right now and she's like... <laughs> I... I think Ploops might have just experienced a microaggression. Oh no! Oh, my mouth is actually watering. Thanks. Yeah. Hungry <laughs> now. Make it sound good. God. Okay. So I think next is. Uh, Robin, where's Alphonse? Is a short uh, struggle. Uh, which yep. currently is, is there any like was there any context given when this was submitted from Meat Morph? Uh, I'll have a look. Okay. Meat Morph. Uh, there is for context. This is my D and D character Sorp here. He's been recently exposed to how cruel the world can be. He's lived in the Feywild for most of his life until something or someone told him to leave. So yeah. I see. Are there it was the dream prompt as well. Okay. Are there any requests uh, for? There are questions? no requests. Okay. Um, it looks like this is mostly just narration, so... Yeah, first-person narration, first so person somebody narration. take it. Um, I'm gonna say bro, because he hasn't gotten to narrate a lot. Oh god, Ploops missed all of that last story. <laughs> he just came back! That's for the best! <laughs> it's for Hi, the Ploops, best! you just got eaten! <laughs> just told just told It's okay! It's okay. It, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't sapient. It wasn't that's all. That's all you need to know. It wasn't sapient. It's fine. Oh, <laughs> Scott's back. Oh, no. <laughs> how I expected to go. Scott's back. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let us proceed with Sorpier's struggle. Sorpier's struggle. Yeah. All right. I woke up in a strange landscape. Some trees scattered around, flowers littering the earth. It was peaceful. All was good. But I've been told nothing good can last. I hear a cry. A scream? It didn't sound humanoid, though. It did sound familiar to me, though. It was a deer. Thoughts of what she had told me flush into my head. Save them. Protect them. I snap back to my senses. But right in front of me was the deer. She seems to be scared. I try to say something to calm her down, but nothing comes out. I look to see her physically injured, a slice right on the neck. I try to heal her, but nothing happens. I try again, and she's gone. The life in her eyes drained. I slowly back away as more begin to surround me. I can't do this myself. I want to help. 
but I can't do anything. More and more begin to surround me. Some fall from sickness, some from humanoid influences, and there's nothing I can do. I keep trying to reach out. I try to speak, but there's no words. I try to save them, but nothing happens. I'm scared. I keep flying past them. More and more fall into the endless sleep. My frantic movements become slower soon to stand still. Tears swell in my eyes. I slowly float closer to the ground, but no, not moving a muscle. The only thing that surrounds me are deer. So many friends and family. Gone. I turn to see one last deer remain. He stares right at me. I can feel his sadness and confusion. The same questions I ask. Why can't I help? Why does nothing work? I come to realize something, but as the thought comes across my mind, the side of the deer is completely slid open. Everything spills out of like a bloody waterfall. A sharp pain hits my side like it's been cut open. It hurts. It hurts so bad. I quickly fall to the ground night next to the deer, our eyes locking onto each other. Everything hurts. Everything is cold. Why? I quickly spring up from my bedroll. I whisper quietly, I am helping, just to see if I can talk. I turn to look at Oscar. He's peacefully sleeping. I lay my head back down and scoot closer to him, falling back to sleep. Ooh. Yeah! That ending came Ooh. together really well. That was really good. Mm -hmm. That was great. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Good narration as well. Yeah, he yeah. did very good, bro. I felt that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some very good imagery. Everything is awful. <laughs> so this, is, so awful. this uh, art is based off of... Uh, it is related to this. So there we go. Save them, protect them. Poor deer. Oh, Poor deer. Poor deer. Poor I can't believe Time Deer is fucking dead. It, I assure you, Time Deer is not dead. <laughs> um, if only. God, if only. So many problems would be solved if we could just kill the Eldritch Deer, but we can't. Get the hunter from Banby in, in, in on this. <laughs> There was a second shooter for Bambi's mom on the grassy knoll. Yeah. <laughs> Bambi. We have a song that Ploops did, I think. Uh, some kind of audio file. And then also, I believe, Phoenix Rising. Uh... With scam licks, people. Yeah, I'm, I've been having trouble. I, I can't seem to open it. I need it's a PDF. Hey, I'll... Yeah, I... Queen, yeah. you're sure this is fine? Because I looked over it and I wasn't... I'm not 100% sure, but, like, if you say it's fine... It's... From what I glanced, it's, like, stuff that's not happened in streams, but, like, as close to been what happened in streams. If you feel like it's fine, then I believe you. Yeah. Okay. But at the same time, I did just glance over it. But I, I looked at the ending and, like, it looks all right. I mean, the title is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it I, is, I don't think anything above the level of what Scam Likely has done on Fallen Empires. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I looked, I looked at his dialogue and it's just like, yeah, this this is Scam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, hang on, I'll upload it. Okay, well, while you do that, we're going to listen to this song that Ploops did some singing. Okay. So we got we to gotta pause the lo-fi. All right. We just got it back, but now we must pause it. All right, let's pause. All right. And I'm going to count down, and I'm going to play the thing, and we're all going to listen to it. Ready? So Three. Where is, that? is everyone paying attention? Uh, uh, it's, it's... Right up to it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yes, yeah, scroll food up. It is between Tallulah's art and, and, uh, food, emblem awakening. and food Emblem Awakening. Yeah. All right, got it. The take two thing. Yes. 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 Okay. Take two. It's it's the only thing that's like a playable Discord audio file. Okay. All right. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Everyone ready? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. As a general reminder to everyone in the mall, down at our local Wicked Candy Store, there will be a special promotion going on for all children under ten years old. Dad, dad, dad! Also, Did you hear that? They're having a special at the candy store! Well, you'll be with your mother this afternoon, so I suppose some extra sugar wouldn't affect me at all. Okay. Go have fun, kiddo. Thanks, dad! 
Come on, come on to the Wicked Candy Store. We have a great special today. Oh, hello there, little boy. <laughs> Would you like to come into the candy store? Uh, don't worry. It's just a candy store after all. <laughs> Don't mind the laughter. It's just a hereditary trait. You can trust me. Why, kiddo, don't you look so gloomy? It doesn't take that much to see. Limit yourself. You could be living roomy. It's so roomy. If you just come along with me, I'll take you to my candy store. Ain't ready for what's in store. Promise I won't leave you bored. I'll take you to my candy store. Ain't ready for what's in store. Promise I won't leave you bored. Now don't you see, it's simply more or less To give in to this tempting delight What's that you say? You think I'm monstrous Well, I'm not here to give you fright Just take it to my candy store Ain't ready for what's in store Promise I won't leave you alone I'll take you to my candy store. Ain't ready for once in store. I promise I won't leave you alone. I'm a wicked candy store. You should have known better not to trust strangers. I'll teach you a lesson that you're not likely to forget. <laughs> I'll take you to the candy store. Ain't ready for what's in store. Promise I won't leave you bored. I'll take you to the candy store. Ain't ready for what's in store. Promise I won't leave you bored. A candy store. Boom, I have no wow. words. Forty-five minutes. How do you say that? Yeah. Forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. How do you even? Yo, Barbershop quartet. Great. Oh my god. <laughs> Barbershop quartet. <laughs> Well, that got dark. Damn. I really liked that a lot. <laughs> that was, that was so aggressive. Good. That was very catchy. Oh, was that was catchy. so good. It was very fun. It was very creepy, which are, these are all things that I love in songs. <laughs> so, wow. Damn, that was really good. Very nice. Good job. Thank you for sharing it with us. It was very cool. Okay, I think all that remains is a uh, scam licks people dot pdf. The best to last. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so I read it closer. Um, the reason he's licking people is because he's high. So, <laughs> okay, so the difficulty here is that. Uh, okay, there we go. I got it to work. Cool. All right. So um, this has like all the members of Fallen Empires in it. So we need other voices. Okay. Uh. Um. So who's going to play what? I, I'm unsure. So who's getting... Who's going to be assigned which Fallen Empire's kin is the real question. I was about to say, who's getting assigned right. which kin? <laughs> so we've got Quinn and Mal. Yes, so that's set. Quinn and Mal. Alex, I, I feel as though you should do scam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've been diagnosed with scam likely. You've been yes. diagnosed with scam likely. I can see you, bro, doing Karelian. Okay. I'm never gonna nail that accent, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Alright, I think all that's left is Momo, right? And the narrator? Yep. yep. Um, I, I can generally hit JoJo's range. <laughs> <laughs> Looks at okay. Waltz. 
yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, and I guess all that remains is the narration, which uh, we've got both Anne and Juno left. Who wants to narrate? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. 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 I, I, I volunteered, but I was muted. All right. Heck. Did you just lick me? Momo asked with a raised eyebrow. All the while, Scam was desperately trying to avert his gaze, and his round green head was bright crimson. Can you blame a guy for being curious? It's not like I'm going to try and eat you or anything. The stares from Corellian, Quintessa, and Mal are only making it all worse. Scam could feel a waterfall of sweat build up and fall from every inch of his body, leaving a distinct smell. I'm not doing this accent. I cannot believe it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's fine. I cannot believe you, Scamuel. The golden kobold sneered in both disgust and surprise. Their eyes were bearing deep into Scam's soul and pulled the poor, traumatized bird. Out of all things you might try, I wouldn't say that licking Momo would be your first choice. Quintessa? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted. This act, was so hor- this, act was, uh, this act of licking Momo was so horrible, in fact, that Quintessa was rendered completely silent. No. Yes, <laughs> but then she snapped out of it and said, it wouldn't be anyone's first choice. Quintessa blurted out. I cannot pretend like this is normal, because it's not normal. Her hands massaged her forehead as her mind whirled to come up with any reason as to why this happened at all. Look, it's not like I judge you and your life choices, Quintessa. Scam deflected, <laughs> taking a long swig of ale, desperately trying to seem as normal as possible. But you do. You do that all the time. Mal deadpanned and leaned back on his chair. Don't pretend that you don't judge. Because every decision you made is just awful. All of them! It would take me, like, all day for me to tell you every bad choice you've made. Scan threw his arms in the air as a small money puppet approached the gremlin and gave pats on his round-like shoulders. You're right, Jibini, they are being judgmental assholes. <laughs> Scam started to sway side to side as he, too, I, more, and... Oh, as he took more and more gulps of that delicious bitter ale. Momo leaned in close and scrutinized every inch of the face of the increasingly deri- delirious face of Scam Likely been taking drugs again, haven't you? Momo sighed, taking in a whiff of the goblin's breath. That only confirmed his suspicions. First of all, wrong, and even if you're right, there's no way you can prove it. Scamuel, can you do me one small favor? Uh, Sure, name it. Corellian leaned in close and gave their best uh, best eating smug grin they could muster. Do the common alphabet backwards. Corellian, you're my best friend, but there's something not even I would do. Why would I even do that? What purpose could there possibly be for that? There was a pungent pause as the two started each other, two stared each other down before the green merchant slowly slithered the tongue out and touched Corellian's nose <laughs> with a yell. <laughs> with a yell, the paladin pulled back and snatched Mal's mug and splashed their face with the last remaining ale inside. All right, so there's already an inconsistency here, uh, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> I was enjoying that. Mal groaned and forlornly and uh, forlornly st- stared into the mug where the ale once was. And I was having such a good night too. Hey, listen, Corellian, don't get offended at anything. Too late. Corellian replied with a snarl, wiping their face with as much energy as they could muster. Gods, I think some of your stench rubbed off on me. Good for you. Anyway, just as I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Momo tasted better. You job, Momo. <laughs> the poor bird had his eyes wide for what felt like an eternity. And I'm supposed to be proud of that? I think that's Momo. Momo. I, I said it. Oh, I okay, sorry, it. you cut out. Okay, uh, oh. he wailed before completely covering his face. Did you at least brush your teeth? I mean, I like you, but I'm not, not in an, I'm going to lick you in an platonic way. Can you even do that? <laughs> Momo was more than happy to snag a couple of jugs of ale from a passing barmaid and down them both. The faster I could forget this, the better. 
Quintessa looked over at the rest of the group, a messy-haired bird, an equally savage and traumatized kobold, rocking back and forth in a chair, and a tearful elf with a dry mouth. So, Scam? Yo! Scam shot finger guns at her with a grin. Can I try whatever it is that you had tonight? With that, Scam climbed to the table and wrapped an arm across her shoulders. Uh, tell you what, I'll talk to my supervisor already. There's an inconsistency there. Only scam supervisors scam, and I'll see if I can get you the stuff. Just, uh, just one, just one thing though. What do you taste like? Quintessa <laughs> in- instinctively threw a right hook at Scam and watched him fall to the marble floor. Scam, don't you fucking dare! All right, geez, fuck, lady. All you had to do was say no. And. And well, <laughs> that was an adventure. Scam no. likely licked the entire Fallen Empire's cast. Oh my well, god, your dialogue is so good! It was yeah. good dialogue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you had the door to say no! God. Oh. Good for you, anyway, as I was saying. <laughs> good for you, anyway, as I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line, and also Alex, your delivery on that line was so fucking good. It was yeah. so good. Yeah. That said me. That said, me. <laughs> that said, we live in an alternate timeline, apparently, where Scam Yola has a supervisor and Malafane actually drinks alcohol. <laughs> Let Mal drink. Let, Let Mal, Mal drink. drink. Let Mal, Let Mal drink. drink. No, you're implying that Malafane wants to drink. <laughs> well, make I Mal mean... drink! Make Mal... I'm kidding. <laughs> Depends on the events that had just happened beforehand, because it is Fallen Empires. Something really traumatizing could have just happened. It's true. Yeah. Big shrug. <laughs> Speaking of which, really Fallen Empires is tomorrow. Please watch Fallen Empires. Fallen Empires, yes. Fallen Fallen Empires, Empires is tomorrow. Empires. Empires. Hashtag watch Fallen Empires. Tomorrow. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of tomorrow, we have we are past our uh, time. Uh, mm-hmm. This was fun. I had a good time. This was great. Mm-hmm. This was yeah. Fun. I had a good yeah. time. Yeah. Everyone made some cool things. It was fun to see cool things from our audience. I think it was a good time. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, as Alex said, Fallen Empires is tomorrow. Cursed Throne is on Thursday. Friday will be more of Xander and I playing Ori and. Uh, then the week after that, Camp Streamix starts. Dun, 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 dun. Oh boy. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll guess, see you all tomorrow for Fallen Empires. Love you all. Yes. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. 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 Bye.